Okay, here we are. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to go live on a Friday. Maybe it's too early for working people. Yeah. But this is what we've usually done before, right? I think so. Yeah. I mean, there are different time zones, different things that happen. Let's see who will join. In the meantime, what are we here to talk about? Huh? No, stop. No more. Okay? Okay. Uh -huh. Hello, we have seven viewers. Ten. Here we are. So, as the description of the video says, what we'd like to talk to you about, hello everyone, is uh, the whole... Yeah, that's right, Southampton. We want to talk about the Meghan Markle and Harry thing and the Ricky Gervais thing. So let's <laughs> let's do some celebrity The things. The things that have occurred. So who has who has kept track of um, the whole royal crisis occurring? Who has kept track of that? Or do you, does no one really care? Is it just overblown by the media? <laughs> yeah, it's over. <laughs> It's overblown by the media, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it, Humphrey? Isn't it, Humphrey? See, they don't have any idea what the royals are up to. To me. It's only daddy's boy. Hi. Hi. So, so, um... So why don't you let, let the... Viewers know what's Apparently, happening. Apparently, this is all just from uh, online articles or news reports mm. that uh, Megan has decided to take her family away from the royal family and move to Canada, was it? Canada, yeah. They're going to move to Canada and retire or, or retire? Not retire, no. Just leave. Start their own business, become financially independent. Yeah, they're gonna quit the royal family. I think is the the phrase that I've heard. Yeah, and which is kind of yeah. Anyway, how many of you have seen a video we made like a year ago about Meghan when before they got married? Mm -hmm. I, I made it was a video. it was the day of the wedding, wasn't it? No, before that, I had made a video just surmising what would happen. Mm. It, you know, if they ever got married. Mm -hmm. And I said that she was a feminist, that oh, Megan okay. was a feminist, and I don't think mm. it's gonna be a good thing for Harry. And mm. a lot of people were skeptical. They said, a lot of people were skeptical of what I was saying. They were like, oh, give him a chance, you know, love is love. Mm. And um, and I also mentioned the fact that, you know, she hasn't, Happy she's, New had a, Year. she's had a Happy divorce previously, oh. and I thought mm. maybe she wouldn't be very faithful. I'm not sure, mm. but then, so anyway, they got married, mm. and uh, we reacted to the wedding. Yeah. Um, which was the wedding was fine, um, but now, I mean, there have been a series of events. Why don't you uh, outline some of the highlights of the of what Meghan has her influence on Harry? I guess. Yeah. Um, I remember your family's coming, but firstly, wave. I don't know. <laughs> So, just to sum up, right? Harry meets Megan. They have a shotgun wedding. I think it's like within a year he gets married, isn't it? Like that. Within a year, William. That's not necessarily a bad thing. William tells him to slow down. He's not sure she's right for him. And he gets um, really angry, and that begins to split between the two brothers, apparently, according to the Daily Mail. <laughs> um, and so then. Anyway, they get married, and all kinds of um, all kinds of tension arises because what Megan has, Megan wants, Megan will get. Those are apparently quote word for word what Harry said at the wedding, and um, that's been, I think, the behavior so far. So um, she wanted a private baptism. She wanted um, a private life without the paparazzi. So, hello, Edward Smith from Baltimore. Uh, we've lived in Baltimore. So, it's all gone uh, pear-shaped because... Oh. Hey, stop. It's all gone pear-shaped um, because 
It looks, from the outside at least, that Harry is just doing whatever Meghan wants, including dividing him from William and then dividing him from his grandmother, the Queen. So it just looks like he's, subserv he's servicing her aspirations, which is the feminist ideal, I guess. Yeah, so this is like your feminist fairy tale come true, right? It's the, yeah. the woman is the hero who comes and saves the man. Yeah, it's not the in prince peril. it's not the prince charming that has, has saved or elevated the damsel in distress. It's the Hollywood actress who has lowered the prince and rescued him from royal purgatory, if you will. <laughs> yeah. He may have very well hated um the royal family i'm not sure if that's true or not but i think when it comes to serving your duty i don't know if and, and also just your blood your family i don't know if that's the best thing to let a woman come in between brothers and between family so Upset the Queen by yeah. releasing the statement without So when, yeah. when, when Buckingham Palace released a statement that said, uh, Stan Cl no, I'm growing a beard, man. Um, when uh, Buckingham Palace released a statement saying that they were disappointed at Harry's decision, disappointment is like the understatement of the century. That's like the worst word that uh, English aristocrat could use <laughs> to describe a situation. It's disappointing means this is horrible. So yeah, apparently, again, apparently to the according to the Daily Mail, the Queen ordered them to not release news of this, of the fact that they're quitting the royal family until later, but they did it anyway. So they mm. defied the Queen apparently mm. and didn't even tell her that they were defying. She found out after the fact, apparently. Mm. Mm. Yeah. He's so far away in line to the throne, he has no reason to appease the royals. Yeah, it, it, if he wants to live an independent life, that's great. But it still seems to me like Meghan's in charge and she's the one leading. Because it's all of her, her like, what is it called? Climate change values are coming out. And, and it's like she's using him as a platform. Yeah. Whereas she didn't have a platform before. And instead of him being the leader of the, the family and deciding what kind of um, uh, values that they're going to portray as a family, it's like all of them are just her thoughts. Does that make sense? Yeah. Are you yeah, reading? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, what's, what's I think winding most British people up is the fact that they want to continue to benefit from royal... Um, monies from Charles's estate from and living in Fragament House which the taxpayers paid millions of pounds they want to benefit from all that while not doing their royal duty so they want all the perks or a lot of the perks of royal of royalty without the duty and um, a lot of people are commenting that this is a hundred percent Hollywood like only in Hollywood can you become super rich and elite and have no duty to the people Mm. But the, in the British, in British society, the aristocracy, yes, they're rich, but they have duties, and so they're held in check. Mm -hmm. So that, that's an interesting commentary, I thought. Um, although businessmen in, in both countries can become rich without checks, it's just interesting. That, it's like the American royalty is a celebrity life, I yeah. guess. So yeah. that's the American equivalent um, is yeah. becoming a celebrity. Anyway, so that's that. Moving on to Ricky Gervais. What's the Ricky Gervais story? <laughs> okay, so some of you may not know because I've, I just spent some time uh, with a British family and they didn't even know that Ricky Gervais every year is invited to host the Golden Globes Not every year, just for the past five years. Every year for that last... Se sequentially. Like, mm. they did not find a different person. He was the same guy every year for the last five or six years. Mm. A long time. And every year he shows up, he has to offend someone. It's his, it's his M.O., right? And, and mm. it's almost like every time he's pushing it a little further and a little further just to see if they won't invite him back. Mm. Um, and this year, there were just some really funny clips where he, he basically roasted the celebrities. And the, yeah. not, the celebrities didn't find it funny. I think that was the funniest part of it. It was that the celebrities got offended. And what did yeah. he say? So what was it? What were some of the things he said? Um, I, 
I think so. The my favorite ones were um, um, my favorite ones were the part where he said, um, "Hang on, after <laughs> this boy, <laughs> I can't think and hold this child." I can't think and child. hold this child at the same time. Um, basically, where he said he said things like, "Okay, uh, oh Leonardo DiCaprio is here. Um, he went to the premiere of his movie." Um, it's such a long movie. It's so terribly long. It's like three hours. In fact, it's so long that by the time it was over, his um, his date was il is illegally too young for him or something like that <laughs> because he's known for um, dating, dating very himself. young women. Oh. The one that I saw, the mainly the one was when he when Ricky um, Ricky like I'm on a first name basis like with Ricky Ricky Gervais when he said. Um, in the beginning, he said, look, when you come up and you get your, if you win something and you get your little statue, um, this is not a time for you to air out your political, uh, views, your, because basically nobody cares. You're just here to entertain us. And he said, um, you've probably gone to high school less than Greta. So don't, don't use it to say anything political. And that was that was the main one that I saw. That that their faces, that's yeah. like Tom Hanks's face was mm. like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was right in the gut. Because that that's what they really, love to do. Yeah. And then many of them went on to do exactly what he said not yeah. to do. Um, it's like they're thick. Cause yeah, they're... exactly. The other one that I really liked um, was the one where he. Um, it wasn't. Um, Let's see. It wasn't uh, the Sopran It wasn't the Italian mafia that was sitting around the table. It was um, the way he reacted with the people. So like the fact that the people were groaning, he was just like, "What? Like, what? oh yeah, you're yeah. doing, you're doing. It's this. your fault." I'm not or doing um, this. or he said, um, "What was the Epstein joke?" Um, I'm trying to remember the Epstein joke. Um, oh yes, oh yes. So I think you might have said it already, where he said, okay, Apple has come on to the TV scene. They've produced a, a brilliant show. I forget the name of it. But he said it's all about dignity and integrity and doing the right thing, um, um, which is really surprising given that it's made by a company that has slaves in China or something. Oh, Weinstein. Um, That's what you're talking yeah. about. No, it was Epstein. Weinstein and Epstein. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he the just... other one, yeah, the other one was that the Weinstein one was saying um, uh, that he watched some Bird Box or something. Is that mm. a new show? Mm. Where you, in order to win, you have to pretend you don't see anything. Yeah. And he was like, just like working for Weinstein. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was um, another, mo another thing was up for an award. And it was a show about a person making his way through the world blind. Um, kind of like how you guys worked w under Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> that was Horrible. great. Oh, man. Oh, uh, well, here's the thing is that Ricky Gervais had the courage to take it to their face. The fact that they're hypocrites, big time hypocrites, uh, that they preach a certain ideology, but then don't live it at all. Mm. They, tr they, they preach about integrity and yet they work with Weinstein. They're friends with Epstein. They... Oh, the other one was like, um, you guys are so corrupt. You work for companies that have, uh, so, uh, have enslaved so many people that if ISIS created a streaming service, you'd be calling your agent to try to get a job with them. Um, it's just the, the sheer hypocrisy. And it, take, it took a Brit with courage to go in into their face and, and paint them with the brush that they needed to be painted. But interestingly, I think because he's British, because Ricky Gervais is not American... Oh, they sort of set they, it aside. No, oh. they, they don't know how to react to his humor. Because mm. the British humor is you laugh at yourself no matter how severe and you know cutting the comment is. Yeah. You're not supposed to take yourself too seriously. But these... These celebrities take themselves very seriously. So for mm. him to cut anything and yeah. cut them down, they get very offended. They can't laugh at all. You know, they can't. Hey, Robin they don't Hood. think it's funny at all. They think it's very mm. offensive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just absolutely, absolutely necessary for Ricky Gervais to do that. And um, I just love the the Twitter reaction to it all, where 
you know, the predictably like The Guardian and and BuzzFeed, um, they were like, oh, how mean was Ricky Gervais? Or, oh, you know, that you was... a joke or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that was really cringe. Or, oh, he's right wing now. And he's like reacting to these tweets saying, just because I make jokes about, you know, liberal hypocrisy doesn't mean I'm right wing. Um, and he and he opened up his monologue saying, "Look, this is a, these are jokes. You guys need to um, not, you know, not, you need to not take yourself so seriously. There'll be another day tomorrow, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you can move on." Um, it's similar to Dave Chappelle in the sense that he jokes mm, a lot about black people, and and they the laugh at people. it, and they think it's hilarious. Yeah. You know, they don't get yeah. offended. And then it came out that the Oscars are considering not having a host. So usually it's Golden Globes and then the Oscars oh. is the award season. So, um, so yeah, they're considering the Oscars are considering not having a host because it's too dangerous um, for their delicate sensibilities to have a host that would take it to them. Yeah, so, but they're not going to hire Ricky Gervais. No, he's never done the Oscars. The Oscars. <laughs> um, that would be so, so yeah, so you have. So you have these really interesting British developments, British oh, yeah. like focused developments that are really sweeping the world's imagination um, and world's attention. So you have Meghan Markle, um, which has echoes of Wallace Simpson and the the American divorcee who just try who nearly destroys the royal family. It's like an awesome, um, awesome movie. Um, an awesome like sequel to that. To that movie and then um and then you have ricky gervais and his sort of taking it to the progressive media and progressive hollywood in a crushing absolutely humiliating way that i just i lapped it up i loved every minute of it um but yeah anyway so what do you guys did i mean what did you guys think about either of those two developments it seems like a lot of comments about the royal family, you guys are saying, well, Harry's doing the right thing. He's leaving the royal family, blah, blah, blah. But what do you think about him trying to leave the royal family yet reap the benefits of Fragomen House and mm -hmm. um, his father's estate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, I, you know, I don't think many British people would be fans of um, sort of having your cake and eating it too. Um, living off taxpayer money, um, even initially, and, and shirking your duties. Yeah, biting the hand that feeds them. I'd like to see some statistics on how you know what what the British Harry think about is the whipped. royal family. Yeah, it, it, mm. I think a lot of people want to see the end of the royal family. They want to see it disintegrate, mm. right? And then mm. there are the other ones who are monarchists, mm. but. Um, I, I just wonder what people, maybe people like the fact that Meghan is dismantling hmm. the royal family publicly, rather humiliatingly, hmm. um, in that sense. Yeah. yeah. And who knows what's going to happen when Prince Charles becomes king. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone is saying that when Charles becomes king, for example, Australia is going to leave, or is not going to have the British monarch as their head of state. Um, and that the Commonwealth will be weakened with Charles at the top. But we'll see. But, I mean, it couldn't be at a worse time. So you have Brexit happening. You have Prince Andrew happening. And you have the Scots continuing to clamor for independence. So the Queen has basically supervised the, the dis disintegration of the empire and now potentially the disintegration of the Union She's got a sex past son and and now this and Brexit and all that it's just it's so so disrespectful and so and now with Charles ascending to the throne potentially it's it's a lot of cloud of uncertainty for them to be spoiled rotten brats and uh, think so selfishly. I mean just go quietly just say we we're, we're giving up our royal roles and giving up all taxpayer money and just leaving. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for everything. That's it. That would it would have been as simple as that. With mm -hmm. with Gervais, um, Gervais I've liked since extras. Um, I have the whole box DVD set. It's so cringe. I've <laughs> I've liked him for like ten years. Um, 
I just think he was brilliant at, at the uh, Golden Globes. I think they deserved every bit of it. Every, every bit of it. They needed to be taught a lesson. So, anyway, that's 20 minutes on the live. Any final questions or comments? Um, any requests, special requests for videos? <laughs> More live streams. Okay, we'll see about that. We'll see if we can make that happen. Yeah, especially with these children. Yeah, it's nearly impossible. It's a struggle to even find time to record. Your kids are adorable. Yep, Southampton gang, where are you at? Yeah, please review, review Doctor, Doctor Who. Doctor we, have. Who. we have. Go watch Pup Landlord. Would be good to see you do more live streams. With the Rick Mail. I'll take two sugars in my tea, please. There you go. More live streams, definitely. Can you watch Monty Python, Undertaker, Happy Epiphany? Yes. Happy Epiphany to yourself as well. It's been great following. Uh, staying in the UK for good now. We're staying for a long time. We'll see if it's for good. Uh, let's see. You really have you watched? Have I got news for you? All mm. right, big lad. There he is. <laughs> All right, stop blocking the camera. You should watch more British comedies. Some more naval history, please. Okay. Um, bottom best comedy ever. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> React to Norseman on Netflix. I don't know that one. Is that modern? I think so. <laughs> the the that will return. The I the, the crowd. It's crowd. We did that, right? I don't think so. Okay. Leave us some links then if we're if you want us to react to them. Okay, so leave links in, to videos that you want us to react to in this video. And um, with that, we'll bid you adieu. Say so bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye -bye. Thank you for subscribing. We really Thank appreciate you. you guys. And have a good weekend. Say bye bye. Bye. bye.